Robert Dahl served with honor and distinction. Uh, it's come out since then that some of his fellow soldiers say he was a deserter. He may have wandered off the post uh, there in Afghanistan. Uh, did you misspeak? Did you get that wrong? Jim, I realize there's been a lot of discussion and controversy around this, but what I was referring to is the fact that this was a young man who volunteered to serve his country in uniform at a time of war. That is itself a very honorable thing. Uh, and but honor and distinction. Jim, really, I mean, this is a young man who, whose circumstances we are still going to learn about. Uh, he is, as all Americans, innocent until proven guilty. Really? Uh, was, uh, was George Zimmerman innocent until proven guilty? I know that's another story. All right, joining us now, as uh, promised, is John O'Neill, John E. O'Neill. He's attorney, decorated former U.S. Navy Swift Boat and Mine Sweep soldier, and uh, former co-founder and spokesman for Swift Vets and POWs for Truth. And John, it's been about 10 years since you and I talked, and of course then uh, you were the spokesman for that great group of, uh, of soldiers from Vietnam who served with John. John Kerry and fought very hard not to get him or make sure he didn't get elected president of the United States based on your firsthand experiences with him. Uh, and uh, I say thank goodness uh, you succeeded. Welcome. Good to talk to you, sir. It's good to talk to you, Steve. It's been a long time. Uh, thank goodness he never became president, but we're all watching. Right now, the disaster he is as Secretary of State. Yeah. What, a, what a sad deal for our country and for really the forces of freedom all over the world. Well, it, it is a mess, but let's focus on this. You just heard Susan Rice uh, uh, mention, uh, to take, called to answer for her remarks on Sunday, where she said that uh, Sergeant Bergdahl served with the honor and distinction, and you heard her attempt at an explanation. She really didn't back down. Uh, talk, talk about what, you, what, what she said today, and if you, you agree or disagree, and what parts so you do and don't. Steve, the left, um, people like Susan Wright, don't, you know, the thing I learned 10 years ago is they don't care about objective truth. Truth is not a virtue. Um, they're willing to do anything with the facts that they possibly can. It was a better story to trade these five murderers for somebody who was a genuine hero. Of course, they traded them for a deserter, you know, for a guy who arguably switched sides, much as Kerry did in the Vietnam War. And so now, rather than acknowledge the truth or try and reach the truth, they simply try and recreate it or ignore it. Um, a tragedy, really, particularly a tragedy to attack those six um, you know, kids who served directly with him, who spent their whole tour in Afghanistan, a couple of whom were wounded, and who obviously have no motivation but to tell the truth, no more than we did 10 years ago. Um, the you tactic is to attack, a, you know, attack the the, the guy coming forward with the truth. That's the left's tactic. What about what about this uh, this issue? And I, you know, I defer to people like you who put the uniform on. You're all better men than I. Um, what about this issue of, uh, you know, he was a POW, uh, classifying him or calling him that. I don't even know if he was officially classified as that, but they're calling him that now. And that, you know, we leave no American behind because once he puts on the uniform, it doesn't matter what the circumstances are of why he was where he was. We need to bring him home. Talk about those two issues con job on the American uh, people. This is like claiming that George Washington should have invaded England to rescue Benedict Arnold. I mean, it's absolutely crazy. This is a guy who deserted and then, um, you know, clearly collaborated making tapes and so on for uh, the Taliban. Uh, the idea that we would sit and uh, have a, you know, a trade five really field journals is about it amount uh, about what it amounts to for him is just crazy and the theory that the no man left behind steve talked about people who are in service to the united states who uh, like at the chosen reservoir who die even you know rescuing their bodies and then and then sticking together it doesn't refer to somebody who's a uh, deserter who joins the other side uh it would be crazy to spend the lives of people who were loyal soldiers as if we apparently did here and are going to in the future in order to rescue somebody that is a turncoat. What do you think of the soldiers who served with him, uh, who have uh, come forward much in the same way you guys did, but you guys, of course, uh, I don't know if it was easier or harder because you came forward all those years later. Uh, this is cl kind of close proximity uh, for them to come forward. Some of them are still on active duty, some of them not. Uh, what do you think when you hear them and see them speak? 
Well, the amazing thing is the similarity in the whole thing. Um, you, if you listen to them, the government tried to get them to sign non-disclosure agreements, has done everything to try and prevent them from speaking. Um, in our case, we, what was used is uh, detectives would show up, uh, threats were made. Um, my wife would answer the telephone and then she'd hear a bullets firing. Um, so the effort to intimidate them is the same. And I was so proud of the guys that served with me and so proud of these guys because they have absolutely nothing to gain at all. And yet their uh, sense of comradeship with the friends who have died and the sense of honor and loyalty that they have to our whole country is enough to propel them to come forward without, without any gain at all among the uh, you know, 200 or so people in our unit that came forward, no one's ever been an ambassador, no one's ever gotten the slightest thing for doing it, except occasional uh, criticism in the mainline media, and uh, to be fair, more than a few drinks that people buy or, or uh, you know, hands, uh, you know, people clapping. But uh, it's uh, it, it really is a refreshing thing for people that believe in democracy that these soft soap guys can't uh, totally eliminate uh, even when they control the government, totally eliminate the sense of honor, uh, uh, you know, uh, loyalty that exists in the military. John, uh, to, uh, I'm sorry. To attack those guys is unbelievable. Right. Well, I, I, I do want to, and I'm going to play you uh, what, they're, what they're saying about some of those guys, what some people are. But I want to ask you, because you alluded to this at the beginning and you uh, just brought it up again, the similarities. You even, you even specifically said there, there was, I believe, similarities between John Kerry and, uh, and uh, Sergeant uh, Bergdahl. Do you believe that? Oh, very much. Uh, Kerry left uh, Vietnam after about three months, uh, not the year that all the rest of us served. He used the pretense of three Purple Hearts to get out and very quickly. He was making press conferences uh, supporting the North Vietnamese negotiating position, which would have left our our POWs back in uh, in the north. Uh, Birdall, you know, wasn't quite as subtle. He just slipped out into the wire. Uh, within a short time, he was either a prisoner or collaborating with the Taliban. He's made statements in favor of them, uh, full of hate of our country. And uh, so it's very much the uh, the same game. Uh, I also think that if you examine Kerry, it's the thing Kerry's always believed. If you can begin talking with someone, somehow that converts them to your position. Of course, it's, you know, we've been talking in Syria. Uh, heck, we've been talking in Iran. You know, now we're talking with the Taliban, and each place we retreat, and each place our allies uh, die, as they did in South Vietnam. Let me let you hear this and tell me, uh, you might have heard it before, but from either this person, uh, Ari Melber on MSNBC or elsewhere. Let, tell me how you respond to this. But first, we're going to look at the new right-wing playbook for the newly released American POW, a wounded man who isn't even out of the hospital yet. Swift vote first, ask questions later. Well, there is a lot we still don't know about the prisoner transfer that returned former American POW Bo Bergdahl to U.S. custody, whether he was lost or was he a deserter, for example, or whether this trade could lead to larger negotiations with the Taliban. What we do know is that Bergdahl, a former POW who's under treatment now at a military hospital, is being swift voted by the reflexive anti-Obama machine. All right, what do you think? First of all, it's the typical deal, uh, deny any objective reality that the left engages in. Uh, we don't know whether it was a deserter. Yes, he was a deserter. He said he was a deserter. He, he, uh, well, what, about, what about the use of the term swift boating in that context as it applies to these military men and women, although he said Republicans, but I mean, the, the, his own comrades are, are, are saying it, and you guys Right. So to keep it honest, if he believes that he's being swift boated, it would be by his military colleagues, not by the Republicans. Uh, what I think is that what we did was the greatest thing I've ever done in my life, other than give a kidney to my wife. And it was the proudest moment of my life. And for most of my friends, um, you know, some of whom have died since then, it was the proudest thing any of us ever did. Um, if the Democrat, at least uh, since then, politicians have at least mouthed uh, respect for the military, although, as you can see in the VA deal and so on, 
there hasn't been any follow through. It's just been messed up. I think that uh, I would be very cautious using that. The last time the Democrats used it, they lost six Senate seats in the Senate and the presidency by the, by the largest margin in a number of years. All right. Well, they're going uh, to it's going to be a landslide in November by all indications. Uh, listen, John. You know, Steve, you can I, always count on the American people to care. I'm out of time, John. Thank you so much. Great to talk to you again. Stay well. We'll talk again. The panel's next, folks. Don't go away. What can that be?